Quantum Decisions Inside the Mind of an LMS Fanatic, where I'll be breaking down and analyzing some of my more hard-fought battles in LMS. I quickly want to say thank you to everyone who watched my first video. I still can't believe how much positivity and support it got. I'll do my best to keep you guys interested. And a special thanks to the team at RuneScape Chronicles for featuring my first video. And I can't forget my friend Ultra Whale. Where was I? Oh yes. Well after I got frozen in the fog, I wanted to freeze my opponent so that I could at least deal some damage back to him so I wouldn't fall too far behind. During these periods when you're both frozen, I try to focus on my opponent's attack pattern and my prayer so that when I become unfrozen, I can give myself an opportunity to be in the offensive. As soon as I'm unfrozen, I hit him with whatever style he's not praying and immediately get away from the fog. My freeze doesn't land because he just became unfrozen. So most players in the situation like my opponent anticipate another freeze coming. Instead, I hit him with a bolt off prayer and land the freeze while he's praying range. Now that we're on equal ground and the fog isn't chewing into me, I start hitting him with range and mage fakies. I prioritize range because I have an ACB. I also fumbled my mage and turned it into a range fakie, but he didn't fall for it. I ended up hitting my max hit through his prayer, so it was worth it. At around 3 seconds left in my freeze timer, I start preparing to hit him with melee as soon as I'm unfrozen. I hit him off prayer and in his rope bottoms, but only end up dealing 17 damage. He hit me off prayer, but in my tank for a 31. Even though I got the crap end of the deal, it's a deal I take all day long because I was more likely to deal more damage than he was considering the gear we were wearing. Once again, I decide to move away from him because I have PTSD from the gas. At this point in the fight, I have a better understanding of his attack patterns. Take a look at how many times I hit him off prayer. Also take a look at how often he changes his attack styles. He doesn't change them at all at this part of the fight. And because of this, I'm able to put more of my focus on hitting him off prayer. At around 3 seconds left in my freeze, I prepare myself for the next phase of battle. I keep my HP high, and right before becoming unfrozen, I go for a melee fake. Now for the first time in this fight, I'm in the power position. My opponent does a good job here of predicting my attacks and staying in his tank gear. I should also be in my tank gear but I'm too busy worrying about trying to keep up the momentum. I go in for a melee hit, which he anticipates. Now most players would simply bolt after this. Instead, I go in for another whip and follow up with a bolt off prayer. Notice how after I see his gear change, I hover over my prayer to anticipate his attack. He tries going for a barrage, but because I move erratically, he likely misclicks and goes back to his tank gear. I know he's going to try and go for a barrage, so I put on my black dehyde top to bolt him. That last bolt forced him to go into the defense and eat up behind the tree, which eats into my time being frozen. Because he's in the power position, I fall back on my knowledge of how he fights and focus on taking as little damage as possible while also dealing damage to him. Notice how I eat up with 4 seconds left in my freeze. I Patrick into my DDS and Rambo spec him in robes. He takes so much damage that a single eat won't even save him here. He was likely out of combo food at this point, so there was nothing he could have done. My first mistake here is assuming this player is a noob. I start off the fight by rushing him with the typical freeze, bolt, and spec. But this isn't his first rodeo and he anticipates my AGS spec. Now things start going downhill real fast. He manages to whip me in my ropes back to back, putting me on the defensive and now I have to play catch up. Not to mention my inventory is all jumbled up. Let's take a look at what he just did. After getting two whip hits off prayer and lowering my HP to 40. He knew I would pray melee in the third hit, so he goes in for a bolt and gets a free hit off prayer. Had I not been in tank, he might have done a lot of damage. I get back into my tank gear to regain my footing. I eat up and patiently wait for an opening. I also throw on prey melee to negate any chance of dying to a spec. I go in for a barrage and carefully watch what he does. He fake his range but not quick enough as I'm able to get the prayer on in time. Up until this point, he's done just about everything correct. He's been in his tank here most of the time and managed to catch me off prayer, but here's where his performance starts to deteriorate. I notice he's at 60 HP and I'm about to be unfrozen, and if you watched my last video, you know that I'm either about to spec him or fake a spec. I anticipate his melee attack and throw out melee prayer. I managed to pull off my favorite fakey by switching into mage gear and pot tricking into a spec. He got chanced, but because he was in his tank here, he ended up surviving. 
I attempt to keep up the momentum by Brew Blitzing. At this point, it's just a slug match. We're both hitting each other off prayer and falling for each other's fakies. I get a bit of lucky RNG and that 33 whip puts me in a power position. But it quickly fades as I start hitting zeros. Here, I do a good job of faking range and one ticking into my whip, catching him both times off of prayer. Take notice of how I risk a bit of HP to deal some damage to him. Sometimes, you have to make sacrifices and trade-offs in PvP encounters. After I become unfrozen, I break away and try to re-engage with an AGS whack, but I didn't one ticket and he saw it coming. I disengage and pump a barrage into him, then I get a bolt off prayer and close the distance making him think I'm gonna melee, but instead I just go for another bolt. I DZ under him and he camps melee prey. I take this opportunity to keep hitting free bolts off prayer. His last ditch effort is to DDS me and try to change the tide of the battle, but before he can get a spec off, he dies to an AGS whack. In the end, I got good RNG, and because he couldn't anticipate my attacks, he perished. The situation could have easily been flipped if he got the RNG I got. I splash my first freeze and my opponent catches his, immediately putting him in a power position. I try freezing again because he's praying range and I have pretty good mage gear, but again I splash. Normally, you would see a melee attack here, but he carries on as if he's frozen. Finally, I land my first freeze but of course it's a zero. Now that he's frozen and I'm not, I can heal up and try to dictate the fight. Just kidding, I'm frozen again. But now that I've seen how he fights, I can start to anticipate his attacks better and plan a strategy. I sense a spec coming, so I sit in my tank and pray melee, while getting a nice bolt off prayer. I anticipate his attack here because he sits in his tank one tick longer than he has to with the staff out, which indicates he's preparing to one tick something. He becomes unfrozen on his next attack, and he's a decent player, and most decent players will melee as they become unfrozen. If he steps out in front of me here, he likely dies because I'm about to spec, but he makes a smart play here and runs out sideways to avoid my attack. Now I go for a spec here because I'm salty that I wasn't able to KO him and end up wasting a spec for a better opportunity. And he gets a bolt on my robes. Overall, a bad play on my part. I keep my HP high here because I know he has another spec, and I'm frozen next to him. I didn't know for sure he'd spec here, but I threw on melee prayer anyways because I knew he had one more spec left. I fumble mage, and instead of committing to it, I go for a bolt off prayer in robes. His HP is low, so I go for a mage fakie into his spec, but at this point, he had seen it twice and was able to anticipate it. He doesn't expect me to melee again, so I follow up with a whip. I start to do my thing and run around like a crazy man, trying to set up momentum. I actually didn't mean to range at this moment, I was trying to run at him so he'd pray melee. We get into a far casting match here, and since I'm reacting and not predicting, he manages to hit me off prayer 6 times consecutively. At this point, I expect him to melee me, but he moves away and deciding for another attack. The easiest move to do now is to bowl me. But he hits me with an unexpected barrage, so I break away because he has the momentum. He risks his HP in hope of catching a freeze, but he splashes and now I have the power position. I splash twice dealing no damage, while he eats the full HP, so I DD under him and force him to pray melee to get a free hit. His mistake here is committing to the freeze, so I capitalize on this and start moving around erratically while also throwing fakies into him. He sits in his tank for a while, which is good, but he's still married to the idea of catching the freeze. After I notice he splashes, I take this opportunity and try to KO him with an AGS whack. He finally manages to catch the freeze, but it doesn't help him much since he gets frozen next to me. I try again to force some damage to keep the momentum in my favor with an AGS whack. I eat here at 77 to 97, which is a mistake. I should have just instead just kept trying to deal damage to him. I try and go for a mage fakie into melee, but this is another mistake on my part since he's able to predict these fakies earlier in the fight. What he doesn't predict, which I did before, was follow up with a whip afterwards. I learn my mistake from before and get out of the fog. Once again, my opponent tries to commit to the freeze. So I get into my real bottoms for extra mage defense and continue to capitalize on his low defense bonuses. He capitulates because he simply just took too much damage in his robes near the end of the fight. If you enjoyed or learned anything new, please let me know by leaving a like and subscribing. Any feedback would be very helpful as I'm still learning how to construct videos. Let me know if you would like to see something like this again in the future, or if you have any other kinds of video suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you, and have a great day.